Well, good morning, everybody. Mike from today's uh, Shopsmith. Uh, just a quick uh, video here to uh, address uh, some final uh, thoughts on, uh, on some uh, issues and comments from uh, subscribers and folks that have saw, seen uh, the videos from both Scott and myself on the crafter station and the power station. Uh, I do want to finish this all up. But uh, some of the comments were really great. Uh, here's one from George. I won't use his last name. Hi, Mike, and greetings from England. Yes, the crafter station was a great idea, but they're so difficult to find. They are. I've, uh, I've looked. I mean, I had one up until, uh, oh, three, four years ago, and I had a power station, too. Uh, all that was stolen, I'm afraid, here in my uh, Chicago location about three or four years ago, like I said. I lost a lot of good stuff. Uh, you just got to keep looking on Craigslist and eBay, and every now and then you'll, you'll hit on one. Uh, but uh, either a crafter station or a power station would be certainly a nice addition to your, uh, your shop, without a doubt. Uh, thanks for the great information, Mike. The backstory was good. Lots of those kind of comments. Uh, here's another one. I find the crafter station to be a good idea. One could have a Shopsmith tool stand that is, in essence, a very functional power stand that is well consumes little space and is less expensive. Okay. Uh, here's a person. I just found out about the crafter station from Scott Markwood's video about it in the power station. Now I wish I had one. <laughs> See? The, the crafter station really was a, a pure genius uh, product that uh, had it been given some time and some money uh, could really be a, a real a productive uh, type of a product for the Shopsmith line. Uh, what else do we have? Here's a good one. Great video, Mike, on the crafter station. There seems to be a difference of opinion <laughs> regarding running the jointer on the power station. I'm going to get into that in more detail here in a minute. Uh, which I believe has the same motor and drive chain as the crafter. Yeah, the crafter station was powered exactly like the power station, the same unit. Uh, my growth rings reports the speed of the power station is not correct for the jointer. Would you comment? That's what I'm doing here. Uh, you may have more technical details and evidence to support the use of the jointer on the power station. Oh, by the way, thanks for selling me my unit 20 years ago on Mother's Day, Jim. How about that? Anyway, all right, let's talk about this one last time. I personally used the joiner probably more on my power station than I did on my Mark. And I never, ever, ever had an issue with it. I mean, hardwood, softwood, medium, uh, didn't make any difference. Uh, I remember one project it did, I was dealing with the two inch thick oak. It never had a Never had a problem, never had any kind of uh, rippling, uh, just a very smooth, nice cut. Now, understand you're taking light passes, which you should do on any jointer anyway. So, let's talk about jointers. Uh, the speed issue has seemed to be the, the biggest issue in question uh, over the last couple of videos on the power station or the crafter station. So, I did a little uh, research on my own. I got some notes here. I found three very high-end pricey jointers. Uh, well, where are they at here? First one being the Grizzly. There's the Grizzly right there. Uh, well, if I could find my notes here. Give me two seconds, you guys. Uh, this particular Grizzly is $2,100. It has a three-horsepower motor on it. It uh, looks like it weighs 525 pounds, so this is, you know, heavy-duty stuff we're talking about. Uh, has a 3-inch diameter cutter head, okay? And what I found doing my research, cutter head speed is, you know, or cutter head diameter is uh, very important, okay? Uh, the cutter head speed on this $2,100 3-horsepower uh, Grizzly uh, jointer, and this is an 8-inch jointer, by the way, is 4,800 RPM. That's the actual cutter head speed. All right. Uh, the next one I found is a, right here, the 8-inch Delta. A little less expensive, but still $1,900. Has a 1.5 horsepower motor, a 3 and 3 eighths inch diameter cutter head, and the cutter head speed, 
5,500 RPM. So we've gone from 4,800 RPM to 5,500 RPM. One of the most expensive of the, uh, I guess you'd say commercial joiners, is a Northfield. Uh, I'm kind of familiar with Northfield. Some of you probably way more familiar than, than I am. Uh, this is an 8-inch one here, too. Uh, it's, uh, what does it say? You can, it has choice of motors from 5 horsepower to 7.5 horsepower to 10 horsepower. So this thing's a monster. It uh, has four knives in it. The previous two just had three. Of course, the Shoftsman joiner just has three. Uh, this is the first one I uh, have seen that sh uh, has four knives. Cutter head speed, 4,500 RPM. Okay, so these are high-end, very expensive joiners, probably mostly for big commercial shops. And we had a range of, what, uh, 4,800 RPM, 4,500 RPM to 5,500 RPM. All right, so let's uh, drop down uh, to more uh, uh, joiners that we might use in our home shops. Uh, I did a search on best joiners for home shop, and one of the ones that popped up was the Shop Fox. This is a six-inch joiner. It only runs about 415 bucks, has a one-and-a-half horsepower motor in it. Cutter head speed. Now, this is very unusual. The actual cutter head speed is 10,000 RPM. That's fast. I'm wondering if it heats up at all, if uh, uh, it scorches, burns the material. Uh, that'd be interesting to, to try, I think. Uh, but a good looking, it has a high rating, the Shop Fox 6 inch joiner. Uh, if you're looking for a joiner outside of the Shopsmith one, you might want to look at that one. The last one I looked at, and this one sells for about $450 to $550, is the Rikon. The unusual part here, it had the smallest diameter cutter head, two inches. All right. With a cutter head RPM, this kind of makes sense because of the size of the diameter of the cutter head. Uh, the cutter head speed is actually 12,000 RPM. So the point being is, there seems to be a broad range of cutter head speeds. Uh, all of them seem to work. I didn't see anybody say they were burning, like I was talking about a minute ago, or scorching. Uh, in fact, just the opposite. Everybody says uh, all of these machines did a wonderful job. And the uh, Shopsmith joiner uh, equally does a wonderful job. We got a little bit larger than a three inch diameter cutter head on that. Of course on your Shopsmith Mark V you have variable speed. So in the, uh, like the uh, description of the Shopsmith joiner as far as all the the technical stuff, it doesn't really give you a, a, a cutter head speed. It gives you a RPM range for the motor. And I think it went from uh, 3600 to up to 6200. So that'd be using a Power Pro. Uh, of course, the uh, power station or the crafter station, you got a max speed of 4375. And it's a direct drive, so that would be your cutter head speed. And like I said, my experience is it did a marvelous job. And I've had comments also since the uh, posting of that video. Uh, people saying, I have a power station, I've used my jointer uh, for years and years, years and have had no problems. Uh, so, looking at some more of these things. Okay. Yeah, right here. What's his name? John R. Uh, had a power station for 22 years. Uh, I use it strictly for the joiner. Takes up little space and does a, I can't really read that, does a fantastic job, I think it says. F-A-N something. So there you have it. Uh, either way you go, I think you're going to be fine. Uh, if you have a power station, yes, you can run your joiner on it. If you got obviously a, a Mark V, it does a wonderful job. Um, or a, a, a Power Pro 7. Again, wonderful job with variable speed. There again, you got a maximum motor RPM that the uh, Mark V and the Mark 7 tell you to maintain. Because uh, that does control your your cutter head speed. Remember, on the you're using the the lower auxiliary power spindle on the left side of your headstock 
to power that joiner and it runs 1.5 times faster than the actual RPM on the motor. Okay, uh, hopefully kind of cleared some of this up. Just a real broad range of, uh, of uh, speeds. Everything seems to work good. Of course, the real advantage of having a uh, uh, Shopsmith joiner on your Mark or your Power Pro is you can run them both simultaneously. Run, run your joiner and your table saw simultaneously. That's the way this thing was always designed, where you joint, rip, joint. Saves a lot of steps, saves a lot of time. So hopefully this thing has helped. Uh, if you got any more questions or comments about this kind of stuff, leave it in the comments below here. In the meantime, I'm Mike Young, and this is today's Shopsmith. Talk to you all later.